Okay, so welcome to part two of the Perkex walkthrough. Today we're going to look at creating your own rhythms and arrangements inside Perkex and also cover a very special feature, the dynamics knob. But before we get into that, I have to answer the most common question we're getting at the moment, which is, is this a loop library? Is it a sample library? The answer is, it's both. I cannot stress this enough. Every single instrument loads by default as a loop, which can be changed without limit. You can also load every instrument as a sample library, which is played in a completely traditional way. Almost all of these instruments have multi-round robin variations and as many as eight dynamic layers. So the dynamics knob is available down here at the bottom when you select a stem and also in the edit tab up here. What it does is it allows you to change the dynamics of an instrument with a single knob in real time, preserving the dynamic relation between the notes even down to the lowest levels. So you can use it here in the stem tab by selecting a stem and it appears down here but we're going to have a look at it up here in the edit tab because you can see what it does visually down here where the velocity is displayed. Okay, so here's where it gets interesting. You can actually assign multiple dynamics knobs from different instruments to a single macro knob to create a unique control over the dynamics of an entire set of instruments. We'll definitely look at that in more detail in a later video. But for now, we're going to clear these and go back to the Edit tab and learn about writing your own stuff in Perkex. Let's unload everything and start again with the same kit. OK, so to load the MIDI editor for any stem, you can either go into the Edit tab and select them down here, or you can just double click on a waveform and it will take you straight there. Straight away, you'll notice up here, you've got some of the same controls that you've got in the Mix tab, just for convenience, along with a bunch of new things over here. Each instrument has its own MIDI pattern, obviously, and you can also use Control or Shift to select multiple at once and edit many instruments at the same time, or you can click all to select everything. We're gonna edit this one. So this MIDI editor here functions like, pretty much like a standard door. You can hold Control and mouse wheel to zoom. You can use the mouse wheel to scroll, click the middle mouse button to drag scroll, move notes around, alt and drag to create new notes, and even control and click to preview a note. And also if you control click anywhere in the pattern, it will play it from that sample. So you can preview different parts really quickly. We're going to create a rhythm entirely from scratch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and click this icon and you get a blank slate to work with. Now the fastest way to get a new pattern in there, your own pattern, is to use record mode. Click the record button to arm the selected instrument for recording. If you've got multiple instruments selected, you can actually record multiple instruments at once. But we're just going to go ahead and do this one for now. So record mode. As soon as I play the C, which triggers the entire loop, anything I play on instrument two, which is the B-flat and also the B-flat below, exactly like manual mode, will be recorded into the pattern here. I can go ahead and turn off record mode, and if I play the instrument, it will play my pattern back. Okay, so the first thing I notice is it's definitely not in time. Uh, I played everything super loud, so I probably should mess with the velocity a bit and get some dynamic variation there. If I select all and hit quantize and then give it a go. Yeah, sounds good. I'll add some dynamics in. and I'm, I'm control and holding the left mouse button to preview certain parts of the loop really quickly. 
mouse wheel to zoom. Let's say I'm not happy with this bit here, I can delete it and I can click here and duplicate it either with the button down here or by pressing D on the keyboard and just drag it over there. Now the vertical axis on this MIDI editor represents the round robin cycles. It's good practice to use different notes vertically but there's a very simple way to not have to do this manually and that's simply by selecting all and clicking distribute RR to spread out your notes evenly among the round robins so there's an extremely low chance of hearing any close repetition of the same sample. Um, another good practice is once you've got your rhythm, unless you're specifically doing something with the envelope which requires chopping off the tails, you select all, click fill gaps and it will make sure that no notes are chopped off. Up here at the top of the instrument, you'll see we've got variation one, two, three, four. What this allows you to do is store four different rhythms in the same instrument. So if I click on a variation, it activates it straight away. And you can see variation two selected. If I move a note around, or if I make any changes actually, this is only applying to variation two. It's completely independent. So you'll notice if I go back to one, it's still the original. I can change it entirely. I can draw something random. As you see, they're completely independent. Now. Oh, let's make something really simple here for the sake of demonstration. We'll just do straight semi-breathes. Select all, fill gaps, distribute RR. If I right-click variation two, create key switch. The variation can now be switched using the note C1, and you'll see this is green now on the keyboard. And if I press it, you'll see it actually changes the variation. And if I go ahead and play the instrument, I can switch seamlessly between the two. So not only can you switch between patterns easily, you can actually combine the different patterns and make completely new rhythms. So again, it's a useful tool and it's also a really creative tool to find something cool by accident. It's very easy to stumble across new ideas. And again, I don't want to get into the control tab too much because we definitely want to go through everything in order, but the key switches are also created as connections down here. So they don't have to be assigned to a key. You can actually set the variation change to a sequencer. And if we make something random and go back here. Let's go ahead and get rid of that and go back to our original rhythm. We'll delete the variation. And just to cover the rest of the controls, of course, you can adjust the number of bars up to 32. And you can adjust the time signature as well, like this. And this is the auto zoom. So by default, it's on. And if you zoom in, what it will do is it will, it will zoom vertically from the lowest displayed note to the highest displayed note. If you turn it off, it won't zoom vertically at all. This icon here hides the notes if you want to find a control over velocity. This turns off the velocity and this shows an extra envelope that you actually have to use if you want. And you can assign it down here in the matrix, which we will cover shortly. You can also edit the range of your loop. So if you decide that you only want to hear the last four bars or even the last two bars or whatever, you just set the range. And you can see what's going on in the mix tab because every instrument also has an independent playback cursor. You can also save and load your rhythms down here if you want to save it later and open it in a different instance. Or you can use this button down here to revert to the original rhythm. But we're going to go ahead and record something new in. So back to record mode, using the C to play the entire loop and B flats to record my new rhythm into track two.
go out of record mode, I'll select all and quantize it, fill gaps, edit some of the velocity just to add a bit more of a groove to it. Using some of the tools I also showed in the last video, I'm going to say I like this rhythm and I want it played by some of the instruments, some of the other instruments as well. So if we go back into the mix tab, let's play through and see what we've got. I won't touch any of the high stuff, I think. Yeah, I can definitely put it there. And there. So these two, number five and seven. Click here, lock the sound, and I can just drag the patterns over. And now if we play two, five, and seven together. But I think maybe all three playing the same rhythm, a little bit boring. So I'm gonna choose one of them. I'll try this one and let's say I only want this one to loop the last six bars so we offset the rhythm a little bit and make it more interesting and actually let's do it with this one as well let's loop the last seven with that let's play two five and seven together now and see what that happens. see what happens yeah that's cool Now that I've come so far with adding my own rhythm into the into the loop, I might as well change some of the high stuff as well. If I don't want to play it in, I can lock the sound and just cycle through different rhythms. I can do the same for this. Pretty cool. Okay, let's listen to the whole thing. So now we, rhythmically, we've deviated completely from the original thing. Why not change some of the instruments now? So let's change some of the big drums because they kind of dominate the sound. I think that one in particular. So if we go lock pattern, let's go to the big drums category. It's always good practice when switching instruments to go back to the edit tab and click distribute RR, just to make sure that the notes and the pattern are evenly distributed on the round robin variations of the new instrument. And this is a good opportunity to demonstrate again what the dynamics knob can do. So if we play that stem and pull this knob down, you'll see the dynamics is pulled down, but the relation between the notes is preserved. Even all the way down there. You can still hear the accents. Let's go back into the stems where we adjusted the, the loop range and set everything back so that we hear the same rhythm from two, five, and seven. So it sounds really cool, but there's just one thing that bothers me and that's that these drums, they're not extremely snappy, but there's not so much natural flam in the attacks. So when you have many people playing drums at the same time in unison, 
they never hit the drum at exactly the same time. There's always a tiny amount of delay between each hit. And that's what makes things sound natural, it's what makes things sound real. We want to imitate that in Perk X. I've selected tracks two, five, and seven, which have the same rhythm. If I select all notes, and I'm going to come down here to the humanize function. And what this does, it applies just a tiny bit of timing offset to every note. The slider adjusts the intensity of the effect. So I can play around with it a bit and see. And you will actually, if I zoom in a bit and do it again, if I click it, you'll see that all the notes are moved a little bit. And if I play two, five, and seven now, so that's probably even more than you'd want to go, but I kind of like it. I'm going to leave it in in this case. And not only does it sound more natural, it sounds bigger. And you'll find that if you actually load a bunch of drums which have no pre-roll, extremely snappy transients and layer them together in perfect time, they might even sound like one drum sound, but as soon as you apply a bit of humanization, suddenly it sounds like many drums at the same time. So that's it for the second video. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next one. And in the next video, we're going to look at creating presets, exporting them, and where you can share them with other users. So I'll see you in the next one.